Hello everyone, it's May 25th, 2016, the time is approximately 12 p.m. Pacific, and welcome to today's webinar, Through Their Eyes, The Empathetic Leader During Times of Change. This webinar is presented by Education and Business Programs here at UC Irvine Extension. We're very glad you could all join us here today. Thanks for being here virtually. So to begin, full disclosure, this webinar is being recorded and the archive of this session will be available within 24 hours. If you signed up for this webinar through the UC Irvine Extension Free Events website, you will automatically receive an emailed link of this recording once it's posted, which again will be sometime bright and early tomorrow morning. If for some reason you don't receive the emailed link tomorrow, you can access the archive manually by going to uci.webex.com clicking on the Event Center tab, and then selecting View Event Recordings. Several webinars will be listed. Simply search for the title of this webinar, and you'll find it in the list provided. Uh, but rest assured, the email with the link will go out, and the link will also be posted on the UCI Extension website on the HR and Business Administration pages in the near future. My name is Daniel Powers, and I'm the Program Representative for the HR and Business Programs here at UC Irvine Extension. Today I'm speaking on behalf of my director, Angela Jante. Here's a brief overview of what we'll be covering in today's webinar session. First, I'll give you a brief overview of the features of WebEx so that you'll know how to submit questions throughout the presentation. After that, I'll briefly give you some information about UC Irvine Extension's business administration and HR management programs, which will be shameless plugs, but I promise they'll be quick. Then I'll turn it over to our presenter today, Patricia Bravo, for the good stuff. And at the end of the presentation, we'll have a brief Q&A session. And finally, I'll reiterate our contact information should you have any questions that we did not address. If you encounter any technical difficulties during this webinar, please first take a sip of coffee as indicated on this screen and then send a chat message to UCI John and he will help you troubleshoot any issues you might come across. If you have questions for Patricia regarding the content of this presentation, please submit that in either the Q&A box or the chat panel and we'll address your question at the end of the session, time permitting. The chat panel should show up on the bottom right of your screen, and when you send a chat question, make sure you send it to both host and panelist to ensure that I, as well as Patricia, will receive that question. You can also submit your question in the Q&A panel, as shown on this slide. So let's talk real quick about a couple programs, tangential and or adjacent to today's topic, the Human Resources Management Program and the Business Administration Programs. The HR programs, highly regarded by local employers for its real-world focus, immediate applicability in the workplace, and most up-to-date information on domestic and international HR practices. This program will help you increase your knowledge of staffing, compensation, employer relations, recruitment, organizational development, training benefits, and much more. It will also expand your awareness and knowledge of government regulations and teach you to successfully integrate new technologies into the HR function. This program is designed for HR managers, assistants, trainers, recruiters, and staffing specialists. It's also perfect for managers looking to better understand human capital, as well as those interested in changing careers into HR. The Business Administration Program, if that's more your bag, is modeled after a more traditional MBA program. It combines a series of courses that give you a solid foundation in basic business management. You leave this program with the tools necessary to com competently and confidently face the demands and challenges of today's business environment. The program is designed for a number of audiences. Currently, we have administrators and managers, assistants, trainers, and business specialists as students but the program is also perfect for managers looking to better understand their human capital, finance, marketing, purchasing, sales, in both private and public sectors. If you're interested in either of these programs, or the countless other excellent programs we have here at UCI Extension, be sure to check out our website for more complete details. And speaking of checking our website, 
that's one way you could go to enroll in our next session of classes. The quarter coming up is summer 2016, and those classes begin right around the end of June. Here are some classes coming up in the next quarter. Uh, a lot of our classes are available to be taken either in person on the beautiful UC Irvine campus or online through our also beautiful online course platform. You can check out our website for complete course meeting details for these and other classes. So uh, on the screen now you'll see uh, the address of our website, extension.uci.edu. Uh, that's where you can find these brochures and many, many more. Uh, if you have any questions about programs or enrollment, you can also call Student Services at 949-824-5414. You can enroll both on the website or on the phone. And at this time, I'm going to go ahead and hand the presentation over to uh, our guest presenter today, Patricia Bravo. Patricia, how are you doing today? I am well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for being here. I am pleased to be here. Thanks for having me. I'd uh, like to kick us off by asking all of you to jump right in and think about a change that you've experienced at work. Think about a change you've experienced at work. It can be a big or a small change, recent or in the past. It might be related to an experience you had in changing jobs, maybe a change you experienced in the content of your work, having to change procedures, maybe technology affected a change in the workplace. Take just a moment to think about a change. And while you're thinking about that, I'll share the change that I'm thinking of to give you a bit of context. The change I'm thinking of took place back in 2013 when I made the decision to make a career change. Up until that point, I had spent years working in a corporate environment in roles related to human resources and talent management, and now I was about to make a pivot. I was planning to leave my company. At that time, I was working at Starbucks at the corporate headquarters in Seattle. And I was going to leave my corporate room behind to start a brand new chapter as an entrepreneur, launching a leadership development business, which is what I'm doing today. At the time, a really intentional change and also a pretty big one. What's the workplace change that you're thinking about? Did you come up with one? Ask yourself these questions. What is the change that you experience? For me, the change was leaving a secure job to launch something brand new. How do you react to the change that you're thinking about? And lastly, did your leader support you as you were experiencing this change? Even though I was initiating my change, I felt a combination of things. Sadness to leave dear colleagues behind, trepidation about the learning curve ahead, and excitement for the new possibilities. I was really fortunate to have support from my leader during this change. I received support to change roles internally and actually had an opportunity to take a job that I was able to do part-time to give myself an opportunity to really adjust as I exited what had been familiar to me for so many years. As you're taking a moment to reflect on your example, identify specifically what was changing. What was your reaction? What feelings did you experience? And as you think about whether your leader supported you, did you receive specific action from your leader to support you? I suspect if we took a poll the answers would vary pretty widely. So keep your example that you're thinking about in mind for a moment. Let me introduce a key concept that I teach in my online leading successful organizational class, uh, organizational change class here at UCI Extension. And that is the difference between change and transition. You'll see here change is the actual situation that is taking place. And transition, on the other hand, is the emotional process that we individually experience. 
So if I go back to my example for a moment, the change is leaving my full-time job to become an entrepreneur. The transition is the emotional aspect, represented by some of those feelings that I mentioned, sadness, trepidation, excitement. Can you think about your situation that you were reflecting on and identify the difference between change and transition? Take a moment just to reflect on that. Today, what I'd like to do is I'd like to focus on the transition side of change and how a leader, human resources, or talent management professional can support team members through a transition during times of change. One of the things that we know about transitions is that it has three phases. And these three phases have been coined by a gentleman named William Bridges in a book called Managing Transitions. The three phases start with an ending. And this is a time when people are dealing with a loss. During this time, they're really letting go of some old ways and the old identity they have. In my example, I had to let go of my corporate identity and do work in a different way. Another example could be when someone gets promoted in the workplace and suddenly they're managing or leading a team that they used to be a part of. As things change in an organization, team members are pretty likely going to have to let go of something. And as some of you might know, that's not always easy to do. There are ways to help support team members through this phase, and we'll look at those in just a moment. Let me touch on the next phase. The next phase of transition is called the neutral zone. And this is a really messy in-between time when the old is gone, but the new isn't really fully established or operational yet. During this time, there's often a lot of confusion, and team members are emotionally realigning during this phase. At work, this is the time when team members have a lot of questions about the change. So let's do a look at a quick example. Let's say a team changes its entire set of procedures to adapt to a technology implementation. In the neutral role, in the neutral zone, roles, specifically who does what and how, might suddenly become really unclear. And we might become frightened that technology is going to leave us without a job. We might wonder if we should start a job search. We might wonder if we're going to be put in a different role that maybe we won't like as much or be as satisfying to us. Often when team members have heard about a change, motivation may drop and their anxiety may increase. And this is particularly noticeable during this neutral zone. Along with that, productivity tends to suffer most during this phase because team members are distracted. In fact, team members sometimes find themselves overloaded or confused about their work and their direction. And we all react really differently to the phases of transitions. In the neutral zone, I've noticed that this type of ambiguity causes some people to stop entirely and wait for direction, while others want to rush forward and move through that confusion. And no wonder everybody's bumping into the, each other. And this is what causes that messiness in between. So successfully moving through endings and the neutral zone paves the way towards new beginnings. And in this last phase, team members are starting to develop a new identity. They've come to terms with the change and they start to discover a new sense of purpose that really makes the change begin to work. I always tell people that they'll recognize signs of the new beginning when there's some renewal in the work. There's uh, energy that you can observe within a team and that there's some fresh starts to new projects. In the example that I touched on earlier, I experienced new beginnings, I would say about six months into my new chapter as an entrepreneur. Until then, I was pretty well ensconced in that neutral zone. 
In the leading successful organizational class that I teach, there are some very specific techniques that apply to each stage of transition that we learn about. These techniques help leaders and support professionals like human resources or talent management professionals really ensure that they understand what their team members are experiencing during this time. By gaining this type of understanding, what I find is that leaders in particular can then help support team members and really bring them along in the journey. One of the things that we know about team members in the workplace is that they really want to be understood. And this especially crops up during those times of change. For that, there's actually a really effective leadership solution. The solution is surprisingly simple on the surface. The solution is to really give team members what they want. What they want is understanding, and understanding occurs through empathy. So what exactly is empathy? You may have a definition in your mind that sounds something like this. The really common definition you might be thinking about is the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes, to really take the perspective of someone else. And there's actually more to it than that. I dive much more deeply into this when I do work with leaders and teams or clients who participate in my workshops. Diving into empathetic leadership is where you really start to differentiate a good leader from a great leader, especially during times of change. So how can a leader strengthen their use of empathy at work? I've actually created a model, and this model is particularly useful in times of change because coupling it with the specific techniques that leaders can use in each phase of transition, each of these empathetic leader techniques can also support team members across all three of the stages of transition. What I'd like to do is walk you through each one, and as I do, I'll describe what each stage of the model refers to, and I'll also highlight what stage would be most useful to apply a particular technique. One of the things I've noticed is when I teach this model in workshops, I invite participants to complete an assessment of their empathetic tendencies, and this really helps them determine what areas they want to hone in on, and we spend a lot of time diving in deeply into the model to allow them to identify both the areas that they have uncovered some strengths in and some areas where they want to continue to develop. So let me tell you about the different elements of the model. The first is engage your emotions. So one of the things that I have noticed quite a bit about leaders is that they get rewarded in the workplace for a lot of cognitive work, intellectual work, brain work. And that's because they're often focused on problem solving and decision making. Coupled with that, we know that leaders have more on their plate than ever before in the workplace. And as they're running around responsible for uh, P&L, responsible for deadlines on projects, responsible for providing updates to their senior leaders, along with leading a team, one of the things that sometimes gets left behind is spending a time engaging more emotions. So one of the things that I recommend that leaders do is really focus on engaging your emotions as you're dealing with team members who are experiencing phases of transition. As you might imagine, this is especially useful in the endings phase of transition as well as the neutral zone. The second technique I recommend, <clears throat> excuse me, is that leaders monitor your reactions. So monitor your reactions. What I mean by this is focus on the difference between reacting 
and responding. One of the things that I hear from team members quite a bit is that they value leaders who take a little bit of time to reflect on what's been shared with them or consider the circumstances that they're facing and respond in a way that really helps the team member recognize and know that they've been understood. So monitor your reactions connects really well with the next stage that I recommend. And monitor your reactions, by the way, is a great technique to also focus on in the endings and neutral zone. But particularly when it comes to endings, and we know that this is a place where team members are really experiencing a loss, and we all respond differently to losses. Pausing before speaking, this next technique, is really effective during those times. And you can see that that links with the one above, monitoring your reactions. Pausing before speaking allows you to spend more time responding rather than reacting. The next stage that I recommend is act in alignment with what's shared. One of the things that I hear from team members pretty regularly is that they value congruency. And what I mean by that is that they really want to know that what they have shared with a leader is something that the leader is tuned into, recognizing and understanding, and then responding accordingly. Have you ever been in a situation where you brought a problem or a concern to a leader and they responded in a way um, completely opposite to what you expected? These are the situations where I recommend that a leader really focuses on tuning in and listening closely to what's being shared and then acting in alignment with that information. Again, this is a great technique to apply in the endings and neutral zone. Try to relate. One of the things that I appreciate about a leader that I used to work with some time ago is that she spent a lot of time confirming that she was understanding what I was sharing with her in one-on-one -on -one meetings by giving me examples of what I was describing to confirm that she understood. This is a great technique for leaders to use as a way to indicate understanding, something that we know employees really value in the workplace. So try to relate. Now, the reality is we can't always relate to everything that someone else is describing to us. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're genuinely not able to relate, what I recommend is that you ask the individual that you're speaking with, the team member, to provide you with additional examples or ask for permission to share something that might be similar that you've experienced and see if it resonates with them. If it doesn't, what it will do is it will open up the dialogue for a two-way conversation so you can get to a place of understanding. Try to relate is a technique that I recommend taking advantage of across all three of the phases of transitions, as well as this next one, which is help by being instead of doing. One of the things that I've observed about leaders in the workplace is that they are rewarded for completing work and getting work done. And one of the tasks that they're often charged with is troubleshooting and removing obstacles. When it comes to change and transition, sometimes what team members actually need is for a leader to simply be with them in the moment, really present, and understand what's going on, or simply serve as a support by being there and being available, rather than doing something or problem solving. I recommend this technique also, as I mentioned, for all three phases of transition. 
Sometimes what team members really need is simply for the leader to be there rather than take specific action. The next technique is initiate thoughtful questions. Well, that sounds easy enough. Um, what is a thoughtful question? I suggest considering thoughtful questions in a way that apply directly to what's being shared, that link directly to something that you heard from a team member, or if you think that you're having difficulty relating, ask for more information. I always tell leaders that a question like, can you tell me more about that or can you say more about that? is actually a really thoughtful question because you're trying to intentionally engage, understand, and relate to the situation. Initiating thoughtful questions is really applicable and useful in the neutral zone and new beginning stage. The next technique is zero in on the employee or team member. This relates to being present in the moment and focusing in on what the individual is sharing with you. As you might imagine, this is applicable in all phases of transition. And one of the things that I have found is that this helps a leader put aside all other distractions that may be running through their head. As I mentioned, leaders have a lot more on their plate than they have before in the workplace. And if they spend some time really zeroing in on the employee, this again links back to the employee really feeling valued and that the leader is there for them. Lastly, explore possibilities. Exploring possibilities relates most effectively to the new beginning stage of transition. And this is about exploring beyond the obvious. Often when team members come to leaders in the workplace, they're looking for assistance. And they've probably already figured out some of the obvious paths that they may want to take. So exploring possibilities beyond the obvious helps team members feel valued and appreciated because the team member is exploring new ways or new paths for them to consider or demonstrating their willingness to go beyond what's typical or what's beyond the norm. And that's really valued. So how do you spend some time practicing some of these techniques? As a leader, or HR or talent management professional who's often in the midst of a busy workplace, incorporating empathy might be a little challenging when you're faced with competing interests on a daily, sometimes hourly in some workplaces I know, basis. When confronted with a situation where empathy would allow you to more effectively interact with and support a team member, Having practiced empathy with regularity will allow you to more quickly and easily turn your attention to someone using your empathetic lens. What I recommend is that you tune your empathetic antenna on a regular basis by dedicating just a small manageable bit of time to practice. Start out by making a commitment to practice once or twice a week and build up until you're practicing multiple times on a daily basis. Using these techniques, you will become a more effective empathetic leader and in particular, increase your leadership agility using empathy during times of change. If you're interested in this topic of empathetic leadership, please feel free to reach out and connect via email or through my website listed at the top of the slide, or you can also find me on LinkedIn. Next week, I'm releasing an infographic with tips on how to use empathy as a leader. So if you'd like a copy of that, please feel free to email me directly, and I'll be happy to share it with you as soon as it's available. I'm posting on this slide just a little bit more information about me and some of the work I do. And I'm just doing a time check. It looks like I've got a couple minutes for questions. So if anybody has any questions that they'd like to ask, I'd be happy to answer them.
Thanks so much, Patricia. Uh, I, I have a question. Your leadership model uh, dealing with empathetic leadership, it seems to be grounded a lot, and please correct me if I'm wrong, in emotional intelligence. Uh, do you see a lot of overlap or interplay there? I do. In fact, when I talk about this with leaders that I'm working with, either one-on-one -on -one or in teams or even individuals that are participating in a workshop, one of the things I talk about is Daniel Goldman's work in emotional intelligence, and he talks about empathy as one of the four key elements related to emotional intelligence. So this model is definitely anchored to some of that research that has been around for a little while now, um, but the reason why I wanted to create this model is that I heard from leaders that they had read and heard about some of the academic research that existed but they didn't know enough about the how, how to put this into practice. And so that's what I really focused on in creating this model, to anchor it to some of the research that's out there, but also make it really practical and something that a, a leader, an HR professional, a talent management professional could take away and apply immediately in their role. Excellent, thanks. And besides, uh... Daniel Goldman's work and some of the work that you've mentioned here. Do you have any favorite resources on the topic? Yeah, um, one of the um, most popular right now um, researchers on empathy in general is Brene Brown. She talks a lot about uh, empathy as it relates to vulnerability, and she's taking a lot of her work into the workplace now. She's been uh, up to now known a little bit more on the personal development side, and one of the things I talk about in my workshop is there, there are some myths about what empathy is. And one of the myths that I hear is that it's simply about personal development and not really related to the workplace. And so Brene is taking a lot of her work into the workplace now, and I think that um, her work is a great resource for those of you that want to explore a little bit more around how empathy shows up, not just personally, um, but how it can really affect, help and support you as a leader. Thanks so much, Patricia. Uh, so it does not look like we have any other listed questions, so uh, I'll let you go ahead and wrap up if you'd like to. Yeah, I appreciate you all taking the time to invest in our webinar today. If you have any questions that you think about after the webinar has concluded, please feel free to send me an email or connect up with me offline, online. Uh, and Daniel, I think you've got a, an email address that you're willing to accept questions for as well. I thank you for your time today and hopefully get a chance to connect with some of you in the future. Thanks, thanks again, Patricia. really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Uh, so uh, as Patricia said, my information is on the screen. Uh, if you're watching this as a recording, uh, go ahead and send me an email if you have any questions at all about the content of the presentation or about any of our programs or Patricia's class. Um, which is coming up, actually. It's one of the, co the courses that's being uh, held in the summer, so registration for that is open now. Uh, so please shoot me any questions you might have. Uh, additionally, this is our program contact information. My director, again, is Angela Jonte. My name is Daniel Powers, and you can call me or email me with anything you have. If you want to send me some snail mail, that'd be great, too. My address is on the screen, and be sure to check out our website for any more uh, additional information about our programs. So thank you one more time, Patricia. This is a great webinar. I really appreciate you presenting today. I enjoyed it. Take care, everyone. All right. Have a great day, everyone, and we hope to talk with you soon. Bye-bye.